Your Excellency, the Governor of Gombe State, Governor Ibrahim Hassan Dakwambo, and representatives of their Excellencies, Governors of the States present, the Honorable Minister of Budget and National Planning and Co-Chair of the National Economic Summit, Senator Odoma Odo Odoma, the Honorable Minister of Communications, uh, Mr. Adebayo Shitu, other members of the Federal Executive Council present, heads of government agencies and parastatals, uh, captains of industry, the chairman of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, Mr. Kiari Buka. Uh, panel of discussants, your excellencies of the diplomatic corps, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me say first that it's a pleasure uh, to be here again at this year's National Economic Summit. And I bring you warm greetings uh, from President Muhammad Buhari, who sends his best wishes for successful deliberations at this meeting. The annual economic summit occupies a special place in our national economic dialogue and is at once a statement of the priority that we attach as a government to close collaboration between the government and the private sector. And at the same time, it's an opportunity for us all to engage in meaningful discussions on the national economy. Our policy of partnering with the private sector is also born out of common sense and reality. While the federal government, uh, on its part, is determined to build a modern economy, its ability to do so is limited by its financial capacity. Its annual budgeted expenditure of seven trillion naira is only a small part of uh, what is really a multi, multi-trillion naira economy. The private sector is clearly bigger, is clearly a bigger contributor to the economy. And it follows that the private sector must be enabled and encouraged to play its decisive role if our development efforts are to succeed. In the period since the last uh, economic summit, the economic recovery and growth plan was articulated and adopted. And this dynamic document, which was developed through extensive consultations with stakeholders, lays out our national economic priorities over the next three years with a short-term focus on getting the economy out of recession and placing it on a trajectory of sustained inclusive growth in the long term. Several issues were raised at last year's economic summit, and in keeping with our commitment to keep faith with the work of the summit, we've made and we've taken several significant steps in response to the specific issues that were raised last year. Let me just speak of a few of those issues. First, the economy, of course, as you know, has returned to the path of growth after a continuous slide from 2014, and it's now well known that we exited recession in the second quarter of 2017 with a modest GDP growth rate of 0.55%. While inflation has similarly declined continuously from its peak of about 186 uh, in January 2017 to about 16% today. Second, last year there were concerns about availability of foreign exchange and the rapidly deteriorating exchange rate. The situation has been turned around and stabilized. Foreign exchange reserves have written, risen to over 32 billion, and end users have increased access to foreign exchange, partly due to increased export earnings and remittances, as well as the introduction of a dedicated transparent window for investors and exporters, NIFEX. The results have been encouraging as the inflows of capital in the second quarter of 2017 have risen to about 1.8 billion US dollars, uh, which of course is almost double the same, uh, the first quarter of this year at about 908 million dollars. Third, another issue of great concern last year, which has been resolved, was the loss of a significant amount of oil production. At some stage last year, we were losing up to one million barrels of oil daily. But due to the engagements uh, that we've had with the Niger Delta and the new vision for, uh, for that region, production has been restored to nearly two million barrels per day and you know, uh, with some figures even in excess of two million barrels a day. 
At the same time, the debt overhang preventing required additional investments in the oil sector have been addressed through the plan to pay off joint venture cash call arrears. There's renewed confidence in the sector, and we're already seeing significant investments. Fourth, for a variety of reasons, including shortage of gas, limitations in transmission capacity and financing constraints, power supply was in the region of about 3,000 megahertz. We tackled these issues, and although there's still vastly inadequate power supply, we've moved up to 7,000 megahertz in, in generation terms. We are at the moment dealing with the constraints in distribution with two notable policy interventions. The, national, the NERC, or National Electricity Regulatory Commission, in August issued the eligible customer directives and will this month issue directives on independent metering. The eligible customer regime allows willing seller, willing buyer arrangements in the sale of power, while the independent metering directive allows independent entities from registered power uh, distribution companies to sell and install meters and to customers and be paid directly as collections are made from metered customers. This will break the distribution gridlock, and there's good cause to believe that we will not just achieve our 10,000 megahertz um, uh, projection envisaged in the ERGP, but also be able to deliver the 10,000 megahertz. Fifth, we undertook to begin the process of diversifying the economy, leading with the agricultural sector. Agriculture has created a large number of jobs and is an important source of raw materials and means of generating foreign exchange. Our anchor borrowers program, launched by the president in 2015, has benefited up to 200,000 small-scale farmers and attracted investments of up to 43 billion naira from participating institutions. What is particularly encouraging is that we are moving steadily towards self-sufficiency in rice, in, 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 in sorghum, and several, uh, and several other products, and scaling up at least in eight other commodities and produce. And these, of course, are vital for food security and also for export. The Presidential Fertilizer Initiative has resuscitated 11 blending plants with a capacity of 2.1 million metric tons with the products being sold to farmers at between 5,500 and 6,000 naira, without subsidy and far less than prevailing market prices. But the best news is the enthusiastic response of the private sector. Walcott opened its 120,000 metric tons per boiled rice plant in KB in August. This is the largest per boiled plant in Africa. In Durama, <laughs> Indorama opened its 1.5 million metric ton fertilizer plant, while Dangote announced its investment in 1 million metric tons of rice mills. Sixth, this time last year, we had promised to take steps to revitalize the railway sector. The now concession narrow gauge railway will soon come into full operation and help redress the high cost of freight, especially of food items. I also had the distinct pleasure of kicking off the construction of the Lagos Ibadan segment of the Lagos Canal standard gauge rail line earlier this year. The seventh issue is a complaint made at the last year's economic summit about lack of consultation with the private sector. Although we refuted this then, but uh, of course it no longer can be said to be the case. The Industrial Policy and Competitiveness Advisory Council, which I chair, consisting as it does of leaders of the public and private sector, is an excellent example of government business cooperation and is contributing through various recommendations to addressing the challenges facing the manufacturing sector. Moreover, we have now had several sessions of the Presidential Quarterly Business Forum, which enables an exchange of views between the federal government and the organized private sector. The last meeting, we had a very useful interaction between the private sector and heads of the regulatory agencies on how to improve the business environment. This leads me to the eighth point, which was raised uh, last year. Our efforts to improve the business environment with the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, PEBEC, 
we introduced reforms under a 60-day national action plan focused on eight areas that make it easier to register, that make it easier to do business. This include registration of business, obtaining uh, construction permits, and we've had to work with uh, certain specific sub-nationals to achieve this. We're working with Kano, with, uh, we're working with the Kano State Government, with Lagos State Government, and the River State Government. Trade across borders, facilitating the entry and exit of people and registration of property. Our, our, our uh, visa on arrival process has proved to be quite effective, and we've got several testimonies on the visa on arrival process. These are some of the examples of what we've tried to do with the ease of doing business. But the second national action plan, which will bring about similar results, was launched at the beginning of this month. Ninth, the last time, the last year, most of our social programs were still framed around projections. This has changed. The Empire program for unemployed graduates has employed already 200,000 young people, with another 300,000 set to be recruited in, the, in this current phase. With regard to the homegrown school feeding, we're feeding close to 12 million children across 14 states that are participating in the program currently, with the numbers expected to ramp up as it begins to cover 21 states in this new academic session. The GIP program, which gives credit to MSMEs, is also growing quite rapidly. The challenges and obstacles facing MSMEs is the tenth area in which we are striving to make progress, and some progress has been made since last year. We have addressed some of the regulatory and financial challenges facing this crucial sector. Uh, the national MSME clinics have been taking place across all the states in a systematic, uh, systematic manner and has helped several thousands uh, of MSMEs to engage with regulators such as business and product uh, registration issues, access to finance, export requirements, amongst others. In addition, an executive order promoting local content in government procurement has been issued intended to give preference to Nigerian small businesses in specific sectors. One of the critical things that uh, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria has proposed uh, to us in support of the local uh, content initiative is that they've asked for uh, what they describe as margins of preference uh, for local content goods. In other words, what they're saying is that if you prefer, if you want to prefer local go content goods, then you must take care of the, of the requirement or the problem that local content goods have. In other words, that they're usually more expensive than imported goods. And so we have to take care of that by what they describe as margins of preference. So, in, so if a local content good is 35% more expensive than an imported good, we still will buy the local content goods. That's the sort of proposal that they are making. Now we're looking at that proposal and we're looking at especially at the percentage for, for procurement purposes. But we do agree with the principle that if we're going to promote local content goods, then we must find ways of preferring them to, to import. And we think that the margins of preference is a sensible way to do so. Now these 10 issues which I've mentioned are not the complete picture of what has been done since last year, but they are rather an indication of the responses to the issues that were raised here last year and what government has done about those issues. And I want to say that the administration the, uh, remains focused on implementing the ERGP and our actions thus far are just the beginning of changes required to turn the economy around. The key thing is that issues of concern raised in this forum must be systematically addressed and we're committed to doing so. And we want to continue to work with you on some of the other lingering concerns because we think that this forum is important not just for throwing up the issues, but also for interrogating what actions government have, has taken to ensure that those issues have been addressed. We're, we're, we're for example, uh, concerned, as, as, as most of us are, with uh, interest rates and the, the, the very high uh, interest rates. And of course, most of that has to do with government borrowing. On account of government borrowing, there is, uh, there, there is obviously, there are obviously problems around interest rates. And we intend to look at those issues very closely. Uh, the evidence, of course, points to crowding out of, of, of business. 
uh, of private uh, business, and we think that that is we think that that is correct. The federal government is therefore trying to reduce the demand uh, for domestic paper, and will seek to refinance maturing domestic debt with long tenor and cheaper external borrowing. Meanwhile, intervention funds will continue to be made available through the Bank of Industry and the reposition Nexim and Bank of Agriculture and the newly established uh, Development Bank of, of Nigeria. Going forward, the federal government will continue to sustain the dialogue with the private sector and most notably through the, Nigerian, through the National Economic uh, Summit, but also through the presidential quarterly business forum and various uh, sectoral bodies. We count on the continued engagement of the private sector to support the economic policies of this administration. And I certainly look forward with anticipation to receiving the outcomes of this 23rd National Economic Summit. And so it's now uh, my pleasure to uh, formally declare open the 23rd session of the National Economic Summit. Thank you.